Look at this cute little hedgehog. Really lovely. But did you know that he has a very scary cousin that lives in the wild? Meet the porcupine, an animal so tough that even lions don't like to mess with them. On the great African savanna, predators, especially the felidae, which include lions and leopards, have always been the king. They have very few enemies in the animal kingdom, but they are often at a great disadvantage when it comes to confrontations with porcupines. And the interesting thing is that despite the fact that they keep getting injured when they attack porcupines, the big cats keep doing it anyway. Why is this? Let's find out. Porcupines are actually rodents. So is its lovable cousin, the hedgehog. But the scary little porcupine, while being in the same family, didn't seem to inherit any of the hedgehog's lovable genes. African porcupines can be up to 25 to 36 inches long and weigh up to 35 pounds as an adult. They actually have really soft black hair and they might be considered kind of pretty if they didn't have those quills. But the quills are the porcupine's defining feature. They're definitely the prickliest rodent out there. Just imagine another rodent, like a sewer rat, with those quills. Ugh, that's too horrible to think about. Porcupines have sharp quills. Porcupines' quills can be up to 10 inches long and are as sharp as Hawkeye's arrows. And just as Hawkeye never misses, you're 100% going to get stuck with a quill if you come close enough to a porcupine. So, you can imagine how terrible it can get for a lion or leopard that's trying to hunt one of these things. According to some studies, in some fights between felidae and porcupines, the predators not only come away without any food to eat, but also leave the fight with serious wounds from the quills. There are recorded cases of lions dying after being stuck with too many porcupine quills. Porcupines will never lose to a lion. Look at how lions or leopards hunt. They will always try to grab their prey and then bite down hard to kill them. But that tactic doesn't work with the porcupine. No. Look at the one the arrow is pointing to here. He defends himself by turning his body so it faces away from the attack. And this means that any predator who attacks is about to get a bunch of thorny quills stuck in its face. Porcupine quills get easily stuck in their predators' faces and sometimes damage their eyes and pierce their jaws. This sounds like torture for the predator. Nevertheless, big cats continue to hunt porcupines and I don't know why. Maybe they love an impossible challenge. <laughs> Maybe they're like humans who need adrenaline rushes such as skydiving, flying into space, or eating at questionable roadside diners for life to stay interesting. Or maybe the lions are just really hungry for some porcupine meat. After all, in the wilderness, food means survival, and when there's a lack of their usual prey, such as during a drought for example, lions have to look for other options. So sometimes they start hunting humans. And sometimes they attack porcupines too. Porcupine meat is pretty good. Like other rodents, porcupines love to eat bark, roots, fruits, and berries, as well as farm crops. Of course, they are uninvited guests to whatever farm they visit. I'll tell you a secret, my friend in Kenya said. Porcupine meat is pretty good. Hmm, I guess these farmers will eat anything, so watch yourself. Their quills are a versatile defense mechanism. Porcupines primarily use their sharp quills as a way to defend themselves and intimidate predators. They stick up their quills in a way that's similar to how a male peacock will spread out its tail feathers. The porcupine's body is protected by these quills that are found on its back, tail, and sides, and the quills lie flat and mix in with their black hair. That is, unless they sense danger nearby. Then their thorns will stand up straight to protect the porcupines and scare anyone who has dared to come close to them. Most creatures will run away when they see this except for the most stubborn predators who will attack anyway despite the danger. Leopards regularly kill and eat porcupines along with any other animals they are able to defeat. 
The leopard is a clever creature, and he can tell when he's attacking that the quill's defense is dangerous, or at least painful. However, there are no quills on the bottom of the porcupine's body. So the leopard tries to tuck his paws, or sometimes even his face, underneath the porcupine and turn it so that his mouth is free to attack the area of the porcupine's body which has no defense. And young lions frequently attack porcupines even when there's other prey available. Probably because they're young and inexperienced and they didn't listen to their parents. And they indeed pay the price for being so foolish. In a recent study of lion-porcupine interactions, there were 40 cases reported in which lions were seriously injured. There were another 10 instances where they were killed as a result of their wounds from porcupine quills. Quills can go to your heart. Luckily, porcupine quills are non-poisonous. However, they are not exactly sterile, which means that once they enter your body, the quill can carry infection or transmit some diseases from the porcupine. In addition, the quills have a strange habit of traveling inside of your body on their own, and they do so at a fairly high speed of about one inch per day. I'm not saying, of course, that a quill that gets into your leg can then one day come out through your ear, but it's quite capable of getting so deeply lodged inside of your body that it becomes impossible to remove it. It's not easy to remove quills. So, what is a poor animal who gets stabbed by some quills to do, except hope that one of their fellow creatures can help him remove them? If a lion gets stabbed, then another lion from the pride can try to help him out. This removal procedure, though, is pretty unpleasant. Then, once the quills are removed, it's time to tend to the wounded area. This is difficult for animals, of course, because they're not like us and they have no access to a first aid kit. So, to try to heal themselves, animals usually lick the wounded area as a reflexive impulse, something you have probably caught yourself doing at some point if you got cut. Saliva, which does have some healing properties, really helps. So, in summary, porcupine pills are dangerous, but big cats still love to play with them. Maybe because they look kind of like a magic cat feather wand. <laughs> well, if they get injured playing with those things, at least they had fun while doing it. If you should take one thing away from this video, it's that you should probably keep your dog away from porcupines or you will have to pay the vet to remove the quills. But I hope you won't have to do that. Okay, like this video and subscribe to our channel to check out more from Wildpedia. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.